to come and bring the word for today. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. What a testimony. I'm actually getting messages. If I've looked a little bit distracted this morning, I've had a, there's been a few things going on. We've had uh, a lady walk in earlier saying, I've got a friend who needs to be in rehab. She's an alcoholic. And guess what? We've, we've found a rehab for her during worship to go into. So God is moving fast. I'm getting messages from people all around the country at the moment who are saying, how good is this testimony? They're watching online. So well done, Renee. People are watching. And um, we're seeing it. When, when we pray, we're not waiting weeks or even days for God to move. We're seeing it happen within hours. We prayed for something on Friday morning and by Friday lunchtime, God had answered our prayers. That's the God we serve. When we're in his will, when we're in his will and we say, Lord, this is what I need, not what I want, this is what I need. He says, here, my son, here, my daughter, here it is for you. If you're praying and you're not hearing from him or he's not answering your prayers, you need to question why. Are you praying his will? Are you being disobedient? Is there something that he's asked you to do that you're not doing? Because you might be the reason the prayers aren't being answered. Don't blame him. Don't get upset when he doesn't do what you want. It might actually be you. But well done, Renee. That's a big thing as she goes to wrangle the kids. Uh, were the kids annoying anyone this morning? Because if they were, you know, we've, we can pray for you later. They, they should be in church. As long as they're not grabbing the cameras and tugging on leads or trying to sneak behind the stage like they were a few weeks ago, it's okay. They should be in church. I apologise to everyone who's watching online who we had an echo and they hear, hear both the kids screaming twice. I really do apologise for that, but welcome to church. That's what we do. Let me pray the Lord's Prayer before we go any further. Anyone who's new, we pray the Lord's Prayer every time we meet because the disciples said, Jesus, teach us how to pray. And this is what he said. They didn't ask him, teach us how to prophesy, teach us how to be an apostle, teach us how to do any of that. He said, teach us how to pray. So join me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. You are God. We want his kingdom to come, don't we? I don't want to wait until I die to see his kingdom. I want to see it now. He'll give us everything we need. He'll forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. If you've walked in this morning with an offence, with someone you need to be forgiving, whatever it might be, let me encourage you as we have the message today. Seek God for that. Seek God for the forgiveness because if you're not willing to forgive someone else, you can't expect to be delivered yourself and forgiven yourself. And his is the kingdom. It's not Gary's kingdom. It's not Shelley's kingdom. It's his kingdom. And it's his power and it's his glory forever. Amen. We're in a new month. It's May. And let me encourage you, if you're coming next week and you're to, to our Mother's Day service or, or you, you have some people you want to bring, let us know. We're catering for it. We're expecting for between 80 and 100 people to be here. Bring your non-Christian friends, but make sure you let us know that they're coming in the next day or so because we need to cater for this. During May, we're going to start working through a series titled The Living Christ and Family Living. And it's designed to strengthen and enrich living in a family. Some of us have had great families. Some of us have come from broken families. Some of us have had really messed up families. But Christ wants us to live in him have him at the centre of everything we do. So we're going to start working through that. And today we're going to talk about Christ lives in my heart. That should be something you can all say, Christ lives in my heart. 
Let me pray for our offering before we go any further. Have you got our offering, Pastor Amanda? If you've got it, just place your hand on it or hold it up to the Lord. We don't do offering messages if you're new here, but we do pray for our offering every week because we believe that that's what we should be doing. We should be raising it up and handing it to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we bow our hearts before you today to acknowledge you as our sovereign creator, our sovereign Lord and and our redeemer. We come acknowledging you as the giver of every good and perfect gift. We thank you for life. We thank you for love. And Lord, we thank you for hope. We thank you for the privilege of worshipping you with our material substance. Accept it, Lord, as an expression of the gratitude in our hearts. Bless it so others can experience your love, Lord. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray this morning. Amen. So the giving boxes are over, or the giving box is over on the on my left, your right. Um, if you if you want to give by card, you can tap and go. It's the easy way to sow. We uh, we do have an FPOS machine now. The text we're going to concentrate on today is Galatians two twenty. How good do our new speakers sound? We we're just testing them this morning. Pastor Daniel's brought them up. In fact, the lady that. Uh, that they've come up from in in Tamworth is actually messaging me earlier as well. I think they sound good. I can actually hear myself from the front now. Scares me a little bit, but that's okay. Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith. In the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. How many of us can actually say that? The scriptures we're going to work through, it's actually Colossians 1, 24 to 27. It talks about sacrificial service for Christ. I now rejoice in my sufferings for you, And fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church. Now, for some people who are watching online who think the church is a bad place and you don't need it, maybe you should read that verse again. Let's continue on. Verse 25. Of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed in his saints. That's you. You're his saints. It's me. To them, God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you the hope of glory. I'm pretty sure we're all Gentiles in this room, aren't we? Do we have any Israelites here? Nick? We have one. (laughs) We have one. The rest of you are Gentiles. I'm a Gentile. There's either Jew or Gentile. There's nothing in between. The riches of the glory of this mystery. Christianity is wonderful news about a Christ who came and died for our sins. It's pretty well all I preached for the last few weeks. I mean, we've just had Easter. He came and died for our sins. He'll set us free from them as well if we want to let them go. He then rose from the dead, triumphant over death and the grave, and brought the light, the reality of eternal life and the gift of immortality. That's what it says in 2 Timothy 8, sorry, 2 Timothy 1, 8 to 10. He brought to light the reality of eternal life. Who doesn't want that? The living Christ came during his earthly life to the Jewish people. 
Many of them rejected him. Many still do today. They still reject him. There's many more Gentiles reject him though, right? To those who did receive him though, he gave the privilege of becoming children of God. He came to live in the hearts and the lives of those who received him by faith. Received him by faith. I struggled with that when I was a new Christian, receiving him by faith. I would have been one of those new believers who the pastors got really annoyed with because I wanted answers. You know what? I couldn't find anyone that would actually answer my questions. The presence of the indwelling Christ is the basis for our hope of experiencing God's full plan for our lives. The presence of him living in us is our hope for experiencing his full plan. If you're not, if you, you, you'll know if you're on the, the path that God wants you on or not. If you're not and you're not experiencing that full plan, let me encourage you to seek him. There may be a little bit of repentance required. There may be a little bit of soul searching required because he's got more for you. He has a plan for you, which is better than anything you could imagine yourself. Belief in the resurrection of Jesus Christ was based on the solid evidence of his repeated appearance to his apostles and all the other followers during the days after his resurrection, but before his ascension. Remember, they're separated. He was resurrected and he walked the earth before he ascended to heaven. He appeared to Mary Magdalene and to the other women that were with her. He walked with two of his followers on the road to Emmaus. They didn't recognize him. The Christ that they'd walked with before was walking with them again. You've heard me say it the last few weeks, if he walked into the building today, would you recognize him? Would you actually let him in? Because he's going to come in. He's... He doesn't look like most of us. He may have long hair. He's probably got darker skin than most of us. May speak Greek, may speak Hebrew. English is probably a third, fourth, fifth, sixth language for him. Would you actually welcome him into the church? Let alone Peter. We probably wouldn't want him in here, would we? Certainly wouldn't want John the Baptist to walk him. You brood of vipers, he would tell us. Jesus appears to the Apostle Peter before his ascension. He appeared in the upper room when Thomas was absent. Remember doubting Thomas? And a week later he appeared when Thomas was actually there. Jesus, if I could just put my hand in. Some of us are like that, aren't we? Show us the signs and wonders. Show us that bright sparkly thing and I'll believe. It doesn't work like that. But there's churches this morning here on the Gold Coast that are doing exactly that. He appeared and talked with seven of the disciples by the sea. He cooked them breakfast. If some dude that looked homeless in Southport, we live in Southport, it's called the hood for a reason. If one of these homeless people said to you, hey, Simon, I'm cooking you breakfast on the side of the street here, would you eat it? Look at this fish that I've got for you. He appeared to the 11 disciples, because there were 11 then. Remember, Judas had sorted himself out. He appeared to the 11 disciples on the mount in Galilee and spoke out the Great Commission. Go forth prophesying over everyone. No. Go forth and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's the Great Commission. That's what we're called to do. Not prophesy over over every person we see. Not hand out fluffy Christian lollipops to everyone because, yeah. Look at the prophecies in the Old Testament. Did anyone cheer about them? They were warnings. Let me tell you, they're the prophecies we need to be hearing now. The world is going backwards quickly. And I praise God for that because that means we're one day closer to Jesus coming back. 
He appeared to over 500 people at another time. And he appeared to James. As the glorified living Christ, he appeared on the road to Damascus when Saul was converted. Some of us need a slapping like that, don't we? To actually realise that Jesus is God. He is our Lord. He found me in a gutter when I tried to hang myself for the third time. I cried out to him, Lord, why won't you let me do this? I still feel it now. He's got his arm around me saying, but I've got more for you, son. I've got more for you. No. That's what it was like for Paul. Jesus appeared. Bang, he's blind. The very existence of the church can be ascribed to the unwavering faith of just 11 men who marched throughout the world affirming that Jesus Christ was alive. we got like 38 or 40 people in this room today. If 11 can change the world, what could we do in this city? If we're willing to actually stand up, be a little bit bold and not be scared of what people are going to think of us. People were offended at last week's message. They didn't ring me. They called other pastors who ring me. (laughs) So there's people that aren't even here. Praise God. If the word of God upsets someone too bad, wake up. I'm sick and tired of a lukewarm Christianity. If you're lukewarm, you might as well just not believe it all. Millions of people today can join us. And I I love it when a couple of pastors who are friends of ours, and they, they... Gary, can we have a coffee? Okay. <laughs> I know what's coming. What did you preach on the weekend? So, well, you've watched it. So. <laughs> Praise God. We had the worship team that was here last week, Joel and Ruth and, and Well, went back to their church and, and said to Pastor Shane, we just love that Pastor Gary preaches black and white. There's nothing in between. Pastor Shane says to them, but what about me? (laughs) He preaches black and white as well. In fact, we want to raise Pastor Shane from Coast White up in our prayers this next week or so. He's off to the Philippines on the 12th for a couple of weeks to do ministry. Now, the Philippines has changed in the last couple of years. So he's not, he doesn't really know what he's walking into. He knows the churches and the ministers, but we're going to raise him up in prayer this next few weeks. In fact, we've been asked to go next Sunday night and and pray for him before he goes at their church service. But millions of people today can join us in saying, you ask me how I know that he lives? He lives within my heart. Can you say that? Let me tell you, a lot of the people complaining about what we preach, they can't say that. Because if the Holy Spirit was in them, or maybe they can, maybe the Holy Spirit's in them convicting them. The living Christ by his spirit in the world is seeking to save people from sin. I'm sorry, but I'm just going to be calling it out from now on. I'm sick of watching Christians, people who want to profess to be Christian, sinning. Now, we're all sinners. We'll all slip up at some stage. But if it's habitual, we'll be calling it out. It's got to stop. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. Acts 8, 26 through to 40. I'm going to read it. It's a long piece of scripture. And we all know it. But look at it in context today. Christ is preached to an Ethiopian. It says, Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is desert. Now, how many of us actually, when the Lord says, arise, go and do something, actually go, well, Lord, I'm just just going to have my coffee and then I've got something else I've got to do and um, let me just check with my husband or wife if it's okay. Or do we actually do it? And how many Israelites at the moment are going to go from Jerusalem into Gaza when they're told to? Verse 27, so he arose and went. Praise God. Behold a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority, 
under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasury, had come up to Jerusalem to worship. This eunuch was clearly wealthy. He was trusted. He was in charge of the queen's treasury. And he was returning and sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet. And then the spirit of Philip, the spirit said to Philip, sorry, go near and overtake his chariot. I'm not saying go near and flip it over or anything like that. He's saying go near and get up there and talk to him. So Philip ran to him. He ran. He said, oh Lord, I don't, don't know this person. I don't know what you want me to do. Maybe I'll sit back and wait. He actually ran to do it. There's an encouragement there for each and every one of us. And he heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, Do you understand what you're reading? And he said, How can I unless someone guides me? Sounds a little bit like discipleship, right? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. Verse 32, The place in the scripture which he read was, He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. So the eunuch answered Philip, in verse 34, if you've got your Bible with you. So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does the prophet say this? Of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at this scripture and preached Jesus to him. How many of us could actually do that? Tell me about this Jesus you worship. What would we say? Well, he loves you. You know, when you believe in Jesus, you're covered in grace. Is that all we've got or is there more? Verse 36. Now as they went down the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What hinders me from being baptised? Well, the canal's a bit cold this morning. I didn't bring my swimmers. Then Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Let me encourage you, if you've been water baptised and you didn't believe with all your heart at the time, come the end of the month, we'll baptise you again if you want. Baptisms are one of my favourite things as a minister. And I'd love to get as many out of the way as I could before winter. I remember a story. Actually, Bryce was there. I don't think anyone else. Amanda was there, obviously. A young guy we knew a few years ago. It was the middle of winter. Our pool that we had was probably about 10 degrees and it's 11 o'clock at night and he says, I want to get baptised. I said, awesome, let's do it next week. He goes, no, I mean now. I said, Damn it. <laughs> it was the quickest water baptism you've ever seen. No one will get in the pool and help me. There's about 30 people at our house that night. But he said, I want to get baptised now. Therefore, that's what we should do. And it doesn't mean that I need to baptise people. You can do it. You can baptise them. Verse 38. So he commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the eunuch went down to the water and he baptised him. Did he get baptised in the name of God? Did he get baptised in the name of the Holy Spirit? Or Jesus? Or Jesus and the Holy Spirit, which we hear sometimes? No. No. Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. So let me encourage you, if you've been baptised in the name of Jesus, let's do it again one day. Let's do it properly this time. If you've been baptised in the name of the Holy Spirit, we'll definitely get you um, baptised again. Because three in one, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. If you've been baptised in the name of Mary and you've been sprinkled, we will absolutely get you baptised here. Now when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away. 
so that the eunuch saw him no more and he went on his way rejoicing. I'm supposed to be in Kenya in July and I hope he catches me away and then brings me back each night because I can't fly. But Philip was found at Azotus and passing through he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. The Lord wants us all saved. He wants us all saved. He wants us all having him living in our hearts. And I love that last bit. He preached in all the cities. Who's going to work on Tuesday? Are you going to preach the word there? I know Amanda was asked to pray for someone who's very new age last week. And guess what? The prayer was answered. What day did you pray? Friday. Saturday lunchtime. Prayer answered. And all the new age friends are going, oh, the world's lined up, the stars. And Amanda's response was, remember to thank God. He's the one we prayed to. We've got to start preaching the word to people. Some of them are going to think you're crazy. In fact, they already think you're crazy. So it doesn't matter. Show them that you are. You're crazy for the Lord. We've got to get that zeal. We've got to become zealots. Not just... Oh, you know, it's, it's 9.30 on Sunday. We should go to church now. Every day, we've got to be zealots. I was nominated as the, the, the chair of our body corporate, and I, and I lost, which is a, not a bad thing. In fact, we, we prayed to God, if this is your will, Lord, <laughs> whatever you do. But we had people in our building where we live saying to everyone else, don't vote for them, they're Christians. We don't want that stuff in our building. Guess what? We, we live halfway up the building, so we're praying over you all anyway. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Simon's there. Simon knows what it's like. We'll just keep praying over them. The world thinks you're crazy. So what? Look at Acts 13, 1 to 4. Paul and Barnabas are sent to the Gentiles. Praise God that they were. Now in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers. You know the Christian term, we were first called Christians in Antioch? The prophets and teachers, Barnabas and Sinium, <laughs> tongue-tied this morning, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Menaean, who was brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, Guess what? We as a church need to be fasting more. You want breakthrough? I can tell you every breakthrough we've had in the church, in our personal lives, in our business lives, when we had businesses, was due to fasting. God answers our prayers when we're fasting. Now they ministered to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Those of you that were here last week, we did that with Chris and Sharon, didn't we? They were separated to do a work. Not plan a church, and I know they're watching this morning. They were separated to do a work, to build a media ministry for the Lord. That churches and ministries around the world have a platform that can preach the gospel 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Praise God for that. We're part of that work. Those of you who were last week were witnesses to it. We are part of that. And it will come to pass. Verse 3, Then having fasted and prayed, they say it again, fasted and prayed, and laid hands on them, they sent them away. And then they were preaching in Cyprus. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia. And from there they sailed to Cyprus. We are ascending church. We are ascending church. If this building is overflowing with people, we're not doing our jobs. We're ascending church. We have several different ministries represented here this morning and quite a few more that will actually be birthed out of this church. Praise the Lord for that. The living Christ comes to live in every believer as well. We need to understand this. Fill me with more of the Holy Spirit. Guess what? He's already in you. Let him out. He's already in you. Don't ask for more. Ask for more obedience to what he says, but he's already in you. 
Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me and the life which I now live in the flesh. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I want each and every one of us to be able to say that. Ephesians 3.17 says, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love. Colossians 1.27, I've got heaps of verses today, heaps of scriptures, because I want you to understand this. It's all through the Bible. Colossians 1.27, to them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's in you already. I encourage you. I plead with you. Do something with it. Do something. We had 40, what, 44 people yesterday at a workshop repenting for stuff in their bloodlines. They're getting ready to get used. Do something with the free gift that you've been given. The living Christ enters the heart of believers through faith. It is through faith that the living Christ lives in us. The living Christ lives in our hearts today as well. This wasn't something just for the disciples 2,000 odd years ago. It's for us today. He lives within us as the forgiver of sin. Praise God for that. We all need it. Am I the only one excited about that, Pastor Daniel? No, you're excited too? He forgives our sin. If we're still sinning, stop. Please, stop. He's not holding you back. You're holding yourself back. He lives within us as the giver of life. I see people walk into the church some days miserable. We're coming to worship our God. Why are we so miserable? You're supposed to have the light of the world living in you. Cheer up. Get excited about our Lord. Get excited that people think you're crazy. Shrug it off. Keep moving. Who cares? There's people in this room that go out in public handing out tracts to people. Isn't there? Some people will think you're crazy. But they take the tract, right? They still want to hear about God, even if they think you're crazy. Come on. He lives within us to forgive our sin. He lives within us to give us life. Stop being sad sack Christians. Yes, you can have a down day, but cheer up. The Lord lives within you. He lives within us as the disturber and the rebuker of evil. I am known as a minister that disrupts things. Pastors try and build fences around their sheep and I kick their fences down because they're not our sheep. It's okay to disturb and rebuke evil. People will get offended with you. It's okay. Preach the word of God. If you're standing on the truth, their offense doesn't matter. They can pick it up and run with it, or they can just leave it where it falls. What you do with offense is your issue. It's not mine. It's not Pastor Shane's. That He, he never offends anyone anyway. <laughs> Pastor Daniel's getting a little bit more like me every day, so we'll pray for him later. <laughs> he is a lot better looking. That's why I don't let, I actually don't let Pastor Daniel preach that often now because he gets more likes on Facebook than me. So we're going to start sort of not broadcasting his services. It's okay to be the disturber and the rebuker of evil. That's what he does within us. You know when you're about to do something wrong and you get that feeling, it's like, oh, no, I shouldn't do this, but I really want to. That's the Holy Spirit. 
That's your conscience saying, hey, wake up. What do you think you're doing? He lives within us as a trustworthy leader. If you follow what Jesus taught, which would mean you'd have to read this and not just take a minister's word for it, because you know ministers will twist the gospel. You know a minister will do a, a giving message to get more money into the church? Who'd have thought? That's why we don't do giving messages. Because we don't want to be seen to do, be doing that. He's a trustworthy leader and everything he's telling you to do is in here. Whatever problem you've got in your life, there's an answer in there. And you'll find that same answer repeated over and over. Because God knows that we're human and we're not the sharpest tools in the shed. So it keeps saying the same thing over and over. He lives within us as a trustworthy leader. We've got to understand that. He lives within us as an adequate and the ultimate source of energy. Lord, I'm feeling a bit tired today. Liven me up. And you know what? He will. Start reading his word. We had a laugh with, with Chris and Sharon last night from Western Australia. Last week for us when they were here wasn't an overly busy week. They're still trying to recover from what we did in four days. That's what ministry is like. The only way you can do it is if the Holy Spirit's there pushing you along. He is the ultimate source of our energy. He lives within us as the conqueror of death. Amen. We should be happy. We should be excited because he has conquered death on our behalf. But many of us walk around like we're dead already. We should be dead to sin. But that's it. It's impossible to separate the living Christ from the indwelling Holy Spirit. I'm going to say that again because people are looking at me a little bit funny. It's impossible to separate the living Christ from the indwelling Holy Spirit. He is already in you. Jesus ascended and sent a helper he sent the Holy Spirit let me tell you the Holy Spirit's not going to do anything that Jesus didn't teach and that God doesn't tell him to do if your dreams and visions are more important than what the Bible says or what Jesus taught let me tell you those dreams and visions aren't from God if they don't align. We can't separate them. What Christ came to accomplish, the Holy Spirit continues working to achieve today. Until the day Christ comes back, the Holy Spirit's still working. The living Christ, we're going a little bit over time, but that's okay. The living Christ wants to live in your heart. The living Christ can bring you or sorry, bring to you, thank you, Lord, can bring to you the peace of knowing that your sins have been forgiven. Does anyone sitting here today not understand that? That your sins have already been forgiven. They are the past. Forget about them. You know, we have, we've got friends who have been through AA, call themselves Christians, but they'll say, Hi, my name's so-and-so, I'm an alcoholic. You're identifying as sin. Identify with Christ. He wants to live in your heart. Let him in. That tree out there is not your God. That canal is not your God. Unless you let it be. Your job is not your God. Your children are not your God. The living Christ can bring you to the peace of knowing that your sins have been forgiven. You've got to remember that. The living Christ gives you the joy, the joy of being alive with eternal life. We can have heaven now. You can have it. you just got to accept it. The living Christ wants to live within you to assure you that divine help will be available when it's needed. Not when it's wanted, when it's needed, Jesus Christ must not be thought of. I'm, gonna, I'm coming in for a landing, Pastor Daniel, if you've got another song or something you're planning. Jesus Christ must not be thought of as limited to time 
or the time of his physical and visible manifestation, that which was a long time ago. You know, we, a lot of our atheists, well, you know, Jesus walked the earth. We believe that he was walking the earth, but, you know, that was back then. In his ascension, the Lord stepped behind a curtain where he is no longer visible to us in the physical form. We can't see Jesus walking around physically now. But in the Holy Spirit, he comes to be everywhere. He's omnipresent. He's present at all times. The living Christ wants to forgive your sin today. In fact, today is probably a good time for some people to repent. If they want to do that up here shortly, they can. Living Christ wants to forgive your sin today. And he wants to bestow you upon the, the gift of eternal life. The only one stopping him from doing that is you. If you're watching online, you can be part of this as well. He wants to give you the gift of eternal life. We've got to stop walking around like we're living in eternal death. I'm sick and tired of seeing sad sack Christians. I love the Lord. Ooh, my life's so hard. He's so great. He blesses me. Oh, my life's so hard. Quit it. Really, quit it. Start being happy Christians. He will become real to you today by faith if you will invite him to come in and if you will mean it. Actually mean it when you say it. Not, Lord, come and, come and live in my heart. And, but you know what? I need you to leave by 12 o'clock because I've got some other stuff planned. Invite him to come and live in your heart today. Revelation 3.20. And I think I'm going to finish up with this. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and, and opens the door, you've actually got to open the door. He's not going to force his way in. I will come to him and dine with him and he with me. It's up to you. I can't open the door for you. I want to see a church that is alive on the Gold Coast. When I say church, I'm talking about multiple churches, not just this one. I love when people can walk in from other churches before the service and say, sorry, I'm late, but I've got to go to my church, but we've got a friend who needs rehab. Can you help? Because our church can't. I said, yes, let me make some phone calls. And I did that. We've got to be a church that's alive. We've got to be a church that's joyous. We've got to be a church that's awake. Let me tell you, yesterday morning, as we prayed again, we're still meeting at 6 o'clock on Saturday mornings. As we prayed, as happened last week or the week before, I was praying for waves of glory over the Gold Coast. And we're standing on the water's edge and there's waves coming in on the broad water. There were no boats but the waves are rolling in again. I think there's probably eight people here today that were there and saw it happen. Praise God. We can be joyous about this. We can be alive. We can wake up our friends and family who want to say they're Christians but aren't really. As Nick said yesterday, some churches have got the Pharisees running them still. You've heard me preach that from this pulpit before. Some have got the Sadducees saying, well, we don't believe all of that stuff, but God loves you. Just go and sin as much as you like. And we've heard that preached in a church on the Gold Coast. Haven't we, Pastor Amanda? God loves you. Just go and do what you want. And then there's the true remnant church. As the church crumbles, and we've been seeing it the last few months. It's been happening for a while, but we're actually seeing it physically happen now. As the church crumbles out of the remnant, out of that rubble, will rise the church of Jesus Christ. I want to encourage each and every one of you today. Which church do you want to be part of? Do you want to be part of the church of Jesus Christ rising from the rubble? Or do you want to be those lukewarm Christians who go, oh, you know, surf's good today. I might give church a miss. Oh, it's a bit rainy out there. 
maybe I'll give that a miss as well. If you're watching online, I'm not sure whether we're still online or not, but if we are, if you're watching online and you're on the Gold Coast, get out of bed. Seriously, if we can do it, you can. We want to be a church that worships our Lord, praises our Lord, gives Him the glory that He deserves. He wants to use each and every one of us. And I can almost assure you that if He's not using you the way you want, you need to get out of your own way. Let Him use you the way He wants to. You need to surrender everything to Him. If there's that one little spot in your heart that you don't want to give Him, today is the day to do it. Give it to Him today. It's time to be fully sold out for what He has for you. You've heard me preaching. If you've been in this church for the last two years, you've heard me preach that by the end of this year, there's going to be people losing their homes. There's going to be people losing their jobs. There's going to be all sorts of issues within families. Let me tell you, interest rates are going up on Tuesday. This is the start of it. This is the start of it. Who is going to reach these people that are lost? Who is going to reach these people that end up living on the street with their kids? There's already over 600 families living in cars on the Gold Coast. Already. Who's going to reach them if you don't? I can't go and do it all. Pastor Daniel can't do it all. Pastor Shane can't do it all. It's time to be sold out for Christ. Today is the day. Today is the day. The church has an opportunity. I'm talking the church everywhere has an opportunity to stand up, be counted. We have an election coming up. Two weeks from now, we can't use this hall. We'll actually be meeting outside because the Australian Electoral Commission are taking over this place for a week for pre-polling and all that sort of stuff. So you know what? There's going to be like two or 3,000 people a day. The Sunday that we're meeting outside, there'll probably be 3,000 people coming through this hall. Guess what? Some of them are going to get saved. We're going to have a picnic and a barbecue and they're going to think, who are these crazy Christians out there? Oh, I can smell sausages on the barbecue. I'll just go and have a look. It's time to wake up, church. We need to start serving Him. As these people lose their homes, as these people lose their jobs, someone has to reach them. It can't be just me. We have people here today that have lost their jobs in the last few months. Pastor Amanda lost her job last Monday night. One of the jobs. She's got plenty. <laughs> I normally create most of them. But she lost her job last Monday night. There's other people we know who are part of this church family that have lost their jobs or about to in the coming month or so. But interestingly, they're the ones that are already sold out for Christ. And it doesn't matter because they know that He is their provision no matter what. There is no lack within this church family. Let me just pray for us. If anyone, do you want to pray for people, Amanda? You, not really? <laughs> Let me just pray for us corporately. And we're running a bit late, so we might have some morning tea. Lord, we thank you that we can gather as a church family on the Gold Coast. We thank you, Lord, that there will be no lack in this body. There will be everything required will be provided. Lord, even within our families that don't know you because we stand in the gap for them as well. Lord, I thank you that you've placed us here for this time, for this season. Lord, allow this church body to bring you glory. Allow us, each and every one of us, at all times to be pointing people to you. It's not about us, Lord. We can't get people saved. But you can. And Lord, we raise our hand this morning and say, pick me. Pick me, Lord. I will go. I don't care if someone thinks I'm foolish. 
I'll be a fool for Christ. I don't care if someone thinks I'm a bit, a little bit loopy. That's okay. As long as they come to know you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let's have a little bit more worship and then we'll...